Angels and Afros, A Teen's Triumph by Melanie Lococo. I perch silently above the azure water, awaiting my chosen fate. Judy grabbed the sharp, shiny scissors and pointed them directly at me. Are you ready? <sighs> yes, I said reluctantly. Snip, snip, snip. I watched my kinky curly hair dissolve into the water like cotton candy. <laughs> oh no, I gasped, holding back tears. I'm 14 years old and I look like a boy. I touched my newly cropped afro and began to fret about how my parents were gonna go ballistic over my drastic haircut. After all, I left for my Easter Hawaiian vacation with long, shiny, straight black hair with a part down the middle covered in a white linen hat with plastic red cherries on the side. I anxiously paced the floor back and forth. Oh, Judy, I confided. My parents are gonna go ballistic. They're gonna go crazy because they want me to fit in. They want me to look just right. They want me to, well, look like the other girls, the other white girls in my private school. They want me to look just right. Oh no, 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 it's all wrong. But you know, I being biracial and being adopted and being raised in the 60s, it was a pretty tough time. And that's why my parents wanted to make it as smooth for me as they could. Hence, the long straight black hair. Well, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. I must be myself. I gotta be myself. No chemicals, no, no ouch, no burning, no cousin Lucy coming over and, oh, let's get your hair all nice and straight. Late that night before my departure for home, I sank my head into my pillow and I called on God and I said, God, please help me. Help me to figure out what I'm gonna say to my parents and what to do. Curling up in my bed like the lonely hermit crab I had collected on the beach, I said to myself, I must be strong when I talk to my parents, at least appear to be strong on the outside, like this little hermit crab. When the plane parked at the gate, my heart fluttered like a thousand butterfly wings. Oh, emerging from the plane, I felt like I was walking as if in quicksand, in slow motion. My parents were at the gate, bobbing up and down, cheering like the kids that were in the, in the waves the day before in Hawaii. I held my breath and for a moment, I gave them a perky smile and kiss. And then whoosh, off with my hat. I'm like, what in the fuck? My father screamed so loudly that you could hear him in the other terminal like he was in on loudspeakers. Shriveled up like the little hermit crab, I said, I cut my hair. I like it this way. It's natural. It's me. My mom, stunned and speechless at her husband's unusual behavior and her daughter's assertiveness, smiled a big grin. My father barked, put back on your hat. We're going straight home and we're calling cousin Lucy to come over. Silent and sunken in the back seat of the car, I feverishly thought, hmm, hmm. Well, you know, how can I talk to my parents? Well, they're business people. Let's uh, say, oh, they won't have to pay. Dad, mom, you won't have to pay cousin Lucy for cutting my hair, no more, no more. Mm, that won't work. Well, uh, okay, this is it. The truth is, the real truth is, this is my hair and I want it this way. It's natural, it's me. Ah, <sighs> that's right. Later that day, I sat at the desk in my bedroom and I pulled out my favorite 
stationery. And in my perfect penmanship, I started to write. Shaky at first, and then a little straighter and more brave, I wrote, Dear Mom and Dad, I know you're mad at me, but please let me keep my hair this way. It's natural and it's me. Your loving daughter, Melanie. I folded it up perfectly and placed it on my father's pillow like a crown. And then I dashed downstairs. I was so afraid. That night I stayed up really late and bit my nails more than usual and had a really upset stomach because I knew they were gonna come in any time with the unwanted verdict. I didn't hear from them that night or the next morning or the next day or the day after or ever again. My parents silently agreed that I could grow my hair as big and luscious as I wanted. And it was luscious. Sometimes I'd put beads on the side. Sometimes I'd put a little color here. It was beautiful. And I wore bright African clothing, colorful, reds and oranges and golds and Indian saris and lots of music and dance. I was so happy. And so were my parents. They are my angels on earth.